Good morning. Uh, a couple of announcements before we begin. Uh, for the online people, uh, if you put prayer requests into the comment section on Facebook, uh, Diane will read them at prayer time. A couple first Sundays to put on the calendar. Uh, first Sunday in October will be the Blessing of Pets. Uh, in November is All Saints. And December, the first Sunday, is the start of Advent. So please mark your calendars accordingly. Then tonight is... That's right. Then tonight, uh, from 6 to 8, is youth group. And tonight, remember, is bring a friend night to youth group. And it is for 6th grade through 12th grade. So looking forward, we had nine kids show up last month. Uh, looking to double that. And uh, there will be games, Bible study, and uh, a lot of fun. So any other announcements? If not, let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. I think Welka is Thursday, is it not? Yes, 11.30. 11.30. Bring your lunch. Bring your lunch. Also, the last hymn, which is, which is way in the back because it's the last one. This one. There's the refrain on the next picture. So if you get hot when we're singing the last hymn, it's okay, because you can fan yourself. Yes, ma'am. We have donuts. I heard Starbucks. I heard you say Starbucks. I heard Rob say Lent. If you have an announcement for me today, if you want to talk to me after church, keep in mind, I can't hear today. Anything else? Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you with our lips, but have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. The craving of war within us cause conflict and disputes. In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and the suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive our sins. Draw near to us with grace in time of need, and turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Gracious Father, bless and guide your church by your Holy Spirit, that we may grow in grace and in knowledge of your word. Fill us with a sense of a high calling as we prepare to serve you by serving our neighbors. And grant us the joy of perceiving and doing your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I need students. Students of all ages, pre-K through grad school. And bring your stuff. That's all right. Side voice. I'll just use my outside.
guys. Good. You all know who you are? You all know what grade you're in? Yep, splendid. Would you like to share that with us? Well, please? <laughs> who wants to start? Go ahead. I almost called you Mandy again. Go ahead, Bristol. Let's see that. Not if you don't want to. Okay. Well, my name's Bristol. Tell them. I know who you are. Oh, my name's Bristol. You're in what grade? Third grade. Where? I go to Lincoln Park. Because you? Huh? Oh, yeah, I play by the I'm a music major. And you? Oh, and I chair. I do like six sports. So. And, and you? Oh, I play five football, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you. So.
they begin another year of school. Bless their backpacks, lunch boxes, pens, pencils, books, computers, iPads, instruments, golf clubs, and all the tools you provide to aid their education. Give these and all students focus, energy, and peace. Open their minds to gain youthful knowledge both inside and outside the classroom. Guide them in learning to make good choices as they grow with understanding. Help them to be people who build up others and are a friend to all. Be ever with them that they may know your companionship at all times and may share your love in all they do. We commend them to your keeping. Trusting in your protection and care. Amen. <laughs> All right, today we have we have bandy pencils. We have squishy animals. We have always have to have sequins, right? And we have pants. And you can have whatever you want. And you can have more than one day. The first lesson comes from the Old Testament, Deuteronomy, the 11th chapter. Love the Lord your God and keep his requirements, his decrees, his laws, and his commands always. Fix these words of mine in your heart and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates, so that your days and the days of your children may be many in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors, as many as the days that the heavens are above the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. We'll read responsibly Psalm 1. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, where it stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, 
but those who delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on the law day and night. Not so the wicked, they are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, the way of the wicked is the Amen. The epistle lesson comes from 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter. Have nothing to do with the godless myths and old wives' tales. Rather, train yourselves to be godly, for physical training is some of value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. This is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. That is why we labor and strive, because we have put our hope in the living God, who is the Savior of all people, and especially those who believe. The Word of the Lord. to St. Matthew, the seventh chapter. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the wind blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Have you discerned a theme for the day? No? How about this one? Christian education. That's the theme of the day. And I want to talk about that a little bit. Sorry, my robe's staticky. How many of you actively participate in Christian education? See, I'm going to set a goal now. The next year when I ask that question, everybody raises their hand. And I'm going to give you a little out, just a tiny one. but I want you to expand on it. You actually do actively participate in Christian education every time you come to worship. Our entire worship service is Christian education. The reformers did that on purpose because pre-Reformation, the mass was in Latin. How many, German peasants, do you suppose, were fluent in Latin? Not many, right? So did they know what was going on? Likely not. They would hear scripture. They never got to read it because it was written in Latin. So only the priest could read it, and sometimes not even they could read it very well. But the priest would tell you what to believe. This is what this says, this is what this means, and that's the only thing you can believe. And then you would come for communion, and then you would go home. And what did you learn? 
Very little, right? So the reformers thought, we have a perfect captive audience here. <laughs> so let's take the Latin mass and put it in the vernacular. Let's take scripture and put it in the vernacular and then people will know what's going on. And maybe they can't read, but they can sing. Everybody can learn a song, right? Everybody can learn a song. So they set the whole thing to music. You may have noticed. That's why we have so much music in our liturgy. And most of our liturgy parts come from scripture. And then they wrote hymns. The great Reformation hymns are actually the catechism, the catechetical in nature, because you can learn that. You can learn to sing a hymn, and then you have all of this knowledge going into your brain. And I mean everything. There's a hymn, it's in our hymnal, even the new one. It's called We All Believe in One True God, which I personally love because it's, it's um, 15th century, and it's minor key, and it's hard to sing, and I love it. It goes like this. We all believe in one true God. That's the first verse. Can you imagine if I put that? It's, we're singing that today, and you'll be like, no, we're not. We might be listening to it, but we're not singing it today. But it's the creed. That's how people learn the creed. And if you look, if you had a Missouri Synod hymnal, which, by the way, their hymnal is excellent. They kept all the verses in the Reformation hymns, and sometimes there's 10, 11, 12 of them, because it's teaching something. All the commandments, the psalms, they set the psalms to music, made them hymns, Bible stories, the history of our salvation, they use music to do that. And our hymns are like that. If you pay attention to the words, like today, what'd you learn? Jesus loves you. That's what you learned so far, right? And Jesus will be with you all the way, right? And when you die, I don't know why we teach little children to sing about when they die, but when you die, Jesus will still be there and you'll still be with Jesus. And we said over and over and over, so it gets in our minds and our hearts, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes. Jesus loves me. We kept saying that. That's Christian Ed. So, haha, -ha, joke's on you. But we have many other ways to engage in Christian Ed. How many of y'all read scripture every day? Good for you. Guess what I'm going to say now? Guess what challenge I'm going to give you now? <laughs> when I ask that next year, everybody puts their hand up. Here are opportunities we have for Christian education just here at Rehoboth. Every morning at 7.30, I'm on Facebook Live praying matins because I'm insane. But I am. Every weekday morning, Monday through Friday, I am on Facebook Live at 7.30 in the morning praying Mass. And, and if you don't want to get up at 7.30 and do that, once our Matin service is over, it stays on the Facebook page. So you can do it. I mean, there are people that pray Matins with me at 3 o'clock in the morning. But it's always there. Take advantage of that. We have Sunday school for all ages, all. Right, Mrs. DuPont? Right. Right, Mr. Gantz? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, all ages, all, all of them. Take advantage of that. We have not one, not two, but three groups that meet every week. Two of them study scripture. One meets on Tuesdays. We, we meet here in person, or you can join on Zoom. That's at noon on Tuesdays, and on those days, Denny makes coffee, and Denny makes good coffee. And people bring their lunches if they want to come in person, and we study the lessons coming up for Sunday. Thursday, I know it says, it, I don't know what it says in your bulletin anymore because I didn't look. 
It used to say Van Kirk Bible Study. It hasn't been Van Kirk Bible Study for ages. In fact, there's only one person left from Van Kirk that's on that. It's Zoom only on Thursday nights at 7 o'clock. And right now, here's that group. There's me, one person from Van Kirk, a Presbyterian, a Roman Catholic, and a Lutheran from Redeemer Monaco. There's plenty of room for more because it's Zoom. You don't even have to put pants on. You can just come. <coughs> Wednesday night started out as a Bible study. Now we read books. And we read really interesting, good books and have fantastic discussions. We just started back up again on Wednesday. We call it, what, what's it say in the bulletin that that's called? Does it just say Wednesday night Bible study? Because our name for it, the name for it has evolved over the ages here. It started out as Slurp and Learn. Remember Slurp and Learn that we do during Lent? And then during the pandemic, we did it online. That's how it started out. And it went through many iterations, depending on what we were reading. And then we decided to throw in adult beverages. <clears throat> so after we read A Pilgrim's Progress and its sequel, Pilgrim's Progress being the story of Christian, and Pilgrim's Progress sequel being the story of his wife, Christiana, it became Drinks with C and C. So that's Wednesday night. But right now we're, 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 reading, we're reading The Patient Ferment of the Early Church, which is the story of how the early church grew even though they didn't do evangelism. What were they doing then? What were they doing? And it's so intensely interesting. And we have these great discussions about how that pertains to now and how the church could be doing some of these things, like one of the big things for me reading that book was learning that the early church did not follow the Ten Commandments as their norm. They followed the Beatitudes as their norm, which is, that's entirely different, isn't it? Yes. It's entirely different between do this, don't do that, and live like this, and take care of each other. That's what they did. So you have those opportunities. And I personally, since I'm in love with Zoom, am willing to add more if you want, as long as they're on Zoom. And I don't have to put pants on. <laughs> but I would come in, you know. It depends on the incentive you give me. But we have all these opportunities for Christian education just here at Rehoboth. Because we take it seriously here. It forms our faith. When we talk about spiritual formation, these are the things that form us spiritually. Our liturgy, listening every Sunday to scripture, reading it every day, praying together, learning together. And speaking of learning together, I have to say about Bible study, how many times I have heard this, it's innumerable. Why well, come to Bible study, but I don't know anything about the Bible? Well, no kidding. That's why we study it. That's the whole point. When you were little, did you say, well, I'd go to school, but I don't know anything about math and reading? No, you went there to learn, right? I'd love to be a nurse, but I don't know anything about nursing, so I'm afraid to go to school. No, you go to learn. We all learn together. We all learn something new every week, I assure you. Even me, can you believe that? So you can teach an old dog new tricks. And I've, I've been thinking about that this week. And then of course, since it's me, Jeff Foxworthy popped into my head. And I thought, here might be some signs that you need to engage more in Christian ed. <coughs> Just a couple. I thought, if you believe God helps those who help themselves, you might need Christian education. If you believe that if you're good, you go to heaven, and you're bad, you go to hell, you might need Christian education. If you think, I can be a Christian all by myself, I don't need to go to church, I don't need a community, 
I can worship God wherever I am and it'd be just fine. You might need Christian education. Those are my three biggies and I'm gonna stop there. But my point is every person in this room, me included, needs Christian education all the time throughout our whole life. Because if we stop learning, what happens when you stop learning? Whoever said you stop growing, you stop growing, that's correct. If you're not learning, if you have the exact same belief now in your faith life that you had in Sunday school when you were in the second grade, is that good? I know, if you had the exact same skill set now to live your life that you had when you were in the second grade, how would that go for you? That'd be pretty horrible, wouldn't it? You'd go to the bank to get a loan, you wouldn't even know what that meant, you couldn't figure out the money, sign your name, you don't know cursive, how are you going to sign your name? It would not go well. And we put more effort into our secular learning and our secular life not thinking about our spiritual life and our relationship with God and with each other, which if you ask me is way more important because that will help form even our secular life. So I am highly recommending Christian education. We have lots of opportunity here for you to engage in that, tons of it. And I am more than willing to add more if you want it. Just tell me. I will add more. I will. All right, we got a deal? Yes. Am I going to see all hands raised next time? Next, next rally day when I say who's actively participating in Christian Ed? Am I going to see all hands? Yes. Are they going to be truthful hands? <laughs> all right. Thanks for dropping by. Amen. Good job, Russ. Yeah. Good job.
I'm going to do the same thing we did with the kids. Tell us who you are and how you're involved in Christian Ed. Go. Rob Hicks, youth group. Sam Dunn's, the adult Sunday school. Sarah Dunn's, uh, sometimes adult Sunday school, uh, sometimes youth group, and when there's communion kids, that. <laughs>
Please rise. God has made us a holy people through our baptism into Christ Jesus, living together in trust and hope. We confess our faith. I believe in God. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. That the Holy Christian Church here and throughout the world will remain faithful to the word of the God, that the right proclamation of the gospel will call all to faith. And for the pastors, people, and ministries of our parish and of First Downtown, St. Mark, Brookline, and Faith McKeesport. Hear our prayer. Let the leaders and peoples of our nations, our cities, and our communities will strive to establish justice for the common welfare of us all. For the seasonable weather that will nurture the fruitfulness of the earth. That the hungry and homeless, the widowed and orphaned, and all those in prison will experience through your church relief, comfort, and hope. For the sick and dying, and for those who care for them, in these we name before aloud or in our hearts. That they will receive from us the gospel of compassion and mercy, and receive from your healing and wholeness. For the saints who inspire and encourage us, especially our parents, grandparents, godparents, teachers, pastors, and faithful Christians who taught us to know love and serve Yahweh. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Thanks Holy God, fountain of all wisdom, enlightened by your spirit, those who teach and those who learn, that rejoicing in the knowledge of your truth, we may worship you and serve you through Jesus Christ our Lord.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, source of every good and perfect gift. Through these offerings and with our lives, help us to serve one another in all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Christ in the night in which he was betrayed took bread and after giving thanks broke it and gave it to his friends saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me After supper, he took the cup, again gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, This is Jesus. Here is your God. Come with joy.
May I just say, before I have you stand up, my joy at going around and then coming there and then going, oh, there's more, and going around and then coming there and going, oh, there's more. Can we do that a lot, please? Thank you. Please rise. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you and keep you in God's life. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to live in holy peace with one another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God the all-loving, God most merciful, bless you, keep you, and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
in your providential care, knowing that with abundant love you continue to be with us. Give teachers wisdom and reverence for you as they help us to grow spiritually. Open all hearts to the renewing action of the Holy Spirit and strengthen the gift of faith you gave us in our baptism, that we may be witnesses to your love through all that we are and do. We ask these things in the powerful name of our great Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I declare this Sunday School and Bright Beginnings Christian Preschool Year is begun in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. The peace of Christ go with you. And also with you. Then he said share even though he's not sitting in the right place. 